Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Lori and this is episode two of the self-love series and this topic is self-judgment in the way that you talk about yourself. Ooh, I feel like we could do an hour and a half times seven times in a week to talk about this because this is that little dialogue that happens in your mind, right? This is that you know, I'm less than whatever that means to you, because a lot of times you don't even know what being enough is because you just assume that you're not, but you don't know what it means. And if you uh, make a mistake or if you let something go or you, you start with this, I'm so stupid, I'm so dumb, you start with this criticism. Yeah, that's opposite of self-love. That's self-sabotage. So you have self-love and on the other end of that spectrum would be, yeah, I guess you could say self-loathing and self-hatred, but also self-sabotage. So if we're on a seesaw, like you don't, you don't want it to be like this way. You know what I mean? Like you, you just don't want it to be that way. So you have to ask yourself, where is that concept coming from? It's not really coming from you. It is, but it isn't. So it's coming from you in the aspect that, yes, you're thinking about it and that's how you're talking about yourself. And I promise you, the more that you worry about other people's validation and their opinions, that's coming from how you feel about yourself. Because when you start having that self-love and you start talking kind to yourself and you have compassion for yourself and love, self-love for yourself, you start to care less and less about other people's opinions because you realize in the big scheme of things, it's super irrelevant, just like your opinion of other people are irrelevant to them, right? It's just the facts. So what do you do in that case? Well, first of all, you want to go back, right? And this is what I do with my clients a lot, but you want to go back and figure out where those false narratives are coming from. Where is that dialogue coming? Because it wasn't originally your voice. You've now adopted that and you've gone into it as being your voice. What's wrong with you? That's stupid. What'd you do that for? That was dumb. Oh my God, couldn't you have done this better? How could you not see that situation? You're so stupid. Like that's so dumb, right? So these are just a few things that just like jumped in my head when, you know, if you're thinking about it, but it can be so many other things right? Let's say you're not getting everything done that you want to get done because you didn't micromanage it because micromanage it, micro goal it because you just assume that you could just do it all. Perfectionism is a huge self-sabotager and the opposite of self-love. Perfection's not real. I have an entire podcast and it, like, like I said, it goes over to YouTube. I encourage you to listen to it because perfectionism is not real and it's always rooted in insecurity. So, but let's take that for a minute. If you feel that you can't do it to perfection, sometimes you just don't do it. Well, you quitting and you stopping it doesn't make it happen any faster. It actually does the opposite of that. So what you do is you have to be compassionate to yourself. So when you, and trust me on this, this is a fun exercise and you're going to be like, oh my God, you don't get to judge it. You're going to be like, oh my God, this is like a lot. And it's a good way, get like a roll or three of dimes, like go to the bank and get like a roll of dimes, you know, like in the little paper thing and have like a little jar or something that you can carry with you in your purse. Or I, I, ha I like to have them in different places. You know, if I'm ever doing this, like if I feel like oh, I'm a little stuck, where am I stuck? Um, put a little container in your car or by your desk or by your bedside in the kitchen, have several at work. You're going to need several because every time have access to these dimes, every time that you think of something negative about yourself, Take a dime, put it in a jar, okay? Take another dime, put it in a jar. Every time that happens. This isn't to show you and be mortified by how many dimes you're putting in. It's awareness, right? So you have to be aware of what you're doing, but you also have to do the job. You have to do the work in this. So if you're like, oh my God, that's just too much. I don't want to do it. Well, then don't, right? Always remember that the healing piece of this takes work on your end. In no way, shape, or form does healing happen fast. Um, is the dialogue with yourself going to change fast? No, it is not. It is because now that's become part of your genetic, genetic, part of your uh, general is the word I was thinking of, part of your general way of life. It just happens. You're just always like, this isn't good enough. Why am I doing this? Oh my God, I need to lose weight. Why, have to, why didn't I get this room cleaned? I have to do this. Like the amount of sabotage that you're doing to yourself on a daily basis is far more than anybody else could or have done to you in the past. So how do you flip that is you give yourself the opposite of that. So instead of saying, I'm so dumb, I can't do this. How about I'm working towards that? See that different mindset, mindset shift. I can't do this. I'm going to work towards doing this. Oh my God. Like I'm starting this new job. 
what if I sound like super stupid? Like, what if I can't do this? Now you go into the what if world. Now you're creating storylines that what could happen can happen. And if they do happen, you'll be just fine. You're starting a new job. That's great. I don't care what kind of a PhD doctor degree you have. Every company does something differently, which means you're going to have to learn something from the start. Everybody in this life starts at zero, everybody. So it's a, it's, it's a way of learning. But if you're not loving yourself and then expecting other people to love you or give you some sort of validation, that is like the biggest hypocritical way of living. And you're never going to get that love because you're looking at love as codependency and a validation in which you need to fill your void that you are refusing. And yes, I use the word refusing to take care of yourself because you do have the tools that you need for your peace, balance, and happiness. You do. You have to allow yourself to be uncomfortable. Allow yourself to face your stuff. Instead of saying, I can't do it, switch up that narrative. Instead of complaining about life, oh, this sucks. And if I'd have done this, I would have been in a different place. You'd have been in a different place. You don't know that it would have been better. Well, anything's better than this. You don't know that. Now you're anticipating again. You don't know that. That's not a fact. It's a fact it'd be different. It's not a fact it'd be better. That's a thought. So that's my point is like, if you're living in a victim mentality, you're going to constantly beat yourself up. If you are constantly insecure, you're going to be looking for other people to fill your void. Spouses, family members, you're going to put expectations. Well, this is how I would do it. Don't they see that this is what I need? Stop that. You're going through your own stuff. So as you go through it, you have to be empathetic to yourself. Be compassionate to yourself like you would if it was somebody else that you loved and cared about. So again, this goes into this failure fear thing. You will fail. Oh my God, embrace that. You will make mistakes. Beautiful. We want that. We need that in our life. Without that, you're never going to find happiness. So when you start with that dialogue, take a little dime, pop it in one of the jars. Do this for about a week. That's why I said you're going to need several rolls of dimes. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with those jars in a minute. So let's say you do this for an entire week. Just every time you hear something negative, don't try to stop it. Don't judge it. Just acknowledge it. Ah, oh, that was a negative thought about myself. Just put a dime in there. At the end of the week, at the end of the whole week, take all the dimes from all the jars, right? Let's say it's 30 bucks. Let's say you've done 10, let's say $30 worth of dimes. Take that and do something kind for yourself right? Because you'd go, well, wait, but I was having a lot of negative thinking. So why am I doing something positive? Because it's acknowledgement. You're acknowledging and you're taking the time to take care of yourself. So you give yourself a gift of being kind and vulnerable with yourself. So of course you're going to embrace that. See, you look at vulnerability as a weakness and it's one of the biggest confidence things that a person can display. If you're straight up real, you're not worried about embarrassment, you're not worried about other people's opinions and you're being vulnerable just to who you are, there's a lot of confidence that lives there. Don't think of vulnerability as a negative. So if you're in your head and you're going, I can't do this, I can't do that. What if this happens again and this person hurt my feelings? And remember, thoughts and feelings are not facts. I will stand my hat on that for the longest of times. Thoughts and feelings aren't facts. So when you accept that, your thoughts about yourself, your feeling about yourself, they ain't facts either. They're not facts, boo. So that's in general. And they're not even your voices. And again, you know how I feel about being on social media. That's everybody's highlight reel. Please stop looking at that and comparing yourself. Stop looking at what you think you see through a lens. I've said this before, matching pajamas doesn't mean a family is made in peace and love and happiness. You don't know what goes on after that picture snap or before it. So stop comparing yourself, right? Because like I was saying, if you're comparing yourself, that's a problem because you're comparing yourself to something that you think that you see, but you don't really know. You don't know what somebody's journey is. You don't know. I've used my pool scenario. You know, I have my in-ground pool that took me six and a half years to save up for. That's right. So if you didn't know that, you might walk by and be like, must be nice to have a pool. Yeah, I did a lot of sacrificing for it. But you wouldn't know that because image-wise, you would think, wow, it just must be nice to have the pool. But you don't realize all of the legwork that went into it, much like everything else. Don't say what you think. Well, why is this person so far ahead? You don't know the level of work. And yeah, nepotism is a thing. So if you have an in, take the in. But they're still going to have to prove yourself while you're there. So stop comparing yourself, stop beating yourself up and let it be what it is. Ah, oh, okay, made a mistake. Cool, what did I learn from it? Wow, cool, I'm learning. Ah, oh, wow, I did that. Ooh, I kind of, oh, that's kind of mean. Okay, acknowledge it. Wow, okay, own your stuff. Hey man, I'm really sorry. They don't have to accept your apology, but hey, you did your thing. Apologize once, no need to go on this big apology tour. 
but you have to be empathetic to yourself. Okay, you could have done things different, but you didn't, you're here now. Let's not live in the victim mentality of your past. If I would have done this, if I would have known that, okay, it's not helping. And then you're beating yourself up and then you're getting on that, uh, that like, uh, like I said, that self-sabotage thing. So be kind to yourself. You are a flawed human. You are imperfectly perfect and you are supposed to be. So the next time you hear yourself thinking of this, put that little dime in the jar. You'd be surprised how much of your negativity is holding you back. Not everybody else is holding you back. So, kind to yourself.